All right, everybody, thank you for coming today. Uh, I'm Jana Weiss, I'm the Student Life Coordinator at Coleman College. And with us today is a fellow HCC uh, administration that works at the Academic Success Center, also known as Tutoring. And we've put together a series called Recipes for Success that help you succeed through your time here at HCC and beyond. And today we are going to be talking about how to win at math and overcome your math anxiety and with our wonderful tutor, Philip Effion. I'm going to give it over to him to let him start the show. Thank you very much, Jenna. Good afternoon and welcome to this section on how to win at math and how to overcome math anxiety. Uh, with me today, I have some of my colleagues with us in this set presentation. Uh, I have uh, Jenna that, is, that started the program. I have uh, Juanita, one of my manager. And I have a, a director, Amanda, with us for today. Once again, you are welcome for this seminar. Today, we are talking about how to win at math and how to overcome the math anxiety. Uh, what is math anxiety? I have four ways to prove this. Math anxiety affects people of all ages around the world. Not only you, it affects people of all ages. It is not merely a matter of feeling nervous. Nervousness is perfectly sensible reaction to something terrifying. Research about 93% reported that adult Americans experience some level of mild anxiety Alarmingly, 17% of Americans actually suffer from high level of mad anxiety, according to Journal of Psychoeducational Assessment. What does that mean? It means that at every point in time, students do suffer from this from mad anxiety. We just resumed some few weeks ago. I have the privilege of attending to students in a section. And some of the ones I've attended to so far, what I notice in them at the initial stage is the fear of mind. So I take some few minutes to talk to them, to calm down, to relax before we begin a section. So this is common to everyone. Before we begin, I'm gonna look at math anxiety set test. So please, I want you to bring out a piece of paper. I'm gonna answer 10 questions. You're gonna circle the one that best describe you as a person. So I want you to bring out a piece of paper. I'll give you some time to do that. Bring out a piece of paper. And we have five options here. Number one, strongly disagree. Number two, disagree. Number three, on the fence. Number four, agree. Number five, strongly agree. So any of the options that best describe you, you circle it. We're gonna calculate the numbers at the end. So I'm, okay, let me give you one minute to do that, to bring, get ready for the question. While we are doing that, let's go to the first question. Remember, you're gonna circle one to five, the one that best describe you. The first question is, do you cringe when you must go to math class? So circle between one to five, that best describe you. Thank you for doing that. Number two, do you get uneasy about going to the ball in a math class. Number three, do you understand math now 
but worry that it will get difficult with time. Please circle between one to five as it affects you. Thank you. Let's go to the next set of the question. Number four, do you tend to zoom out in math class? Do you fear math test more than any other kind? That's question number five. Question number six, do you know how to study for math test? Number seven, do you understand math in class, but seem to forget all when you get home? Remember to circle one to five as it affects you. Okay, let's get to the last part set of the question. Remember one is strongly disagree, two is disagree, three is on the fence, four is agree, five is strongly agree. So let's look at number eight question. Are you afraid to ask a question in math class? Are you worried about being called in? In math class, that's number nine. Yes. Right. I think I should accompany you to the meeting. Uh, no. Then the last question, no. which is number 10. Are you afraid you will not be able to keep up with the rest of the class? Are you afraid you will not be able to keep up with the rest of the class? Thank you for participating. Now we're gonna do our first map this afternoon. The first map we're gonna do, we're gonna add all your score and let's see what you have. I don't want you to add it on my screen. I want you to add it on your, your using your own paper. This add it using your own paper, the, the scratch that you have. Okay, that's our first math for this afternoon. So Adam, let's see what you have. So when you finish adding up, please can you write it on the chat forum so that I can see, we can see what you, your total score there. Go ahead and write it, post on the chat forum there, please. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you for doing that. Post your, your total answers, your total score on the chat forum for us to see. Let's wait for others to do that. Yeah, I can see about, like about two people. Let's have more people contributing. We are about, I think we are about 12 in the seminar. There are, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and see other people's contribution, please. Don't worry, we're not going to ask any questions. We just want to see uh, how your score looks like at this point. I've got 14, some 32s, a 28, a 21, okay. a 23. Okay. 36. Oh, that is six. Okay. Thank you very much for your participation. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. I can see that somebody scored between 10 to 19. That's people that score 14. I mean, you, have, you actually love math. I'm glad to see you in this seminar. You love math. I can see that some of us scored 28. Uh, one person, about two people score within that range, 28, 21, and 23. You may have mad anxiety slightly. And then I can see somebody score 36. Yeah, I mean, you, your math clearly makes you uneasy. Math clearly makes you uneasy. That's your score. Well, for this forum, no one score between 40 to 50. That is good news. But we are the, at the end of this seminar, will help us to, for those of us who score between, maybe between 20 to 39, help us how to learn how to overcome mad anxiety. So that, that will help us to do well in our class. But let's look at now, what are the mad anxiety symptoms and signs? How do you know that you have mad anxiety? 
The first was what we call physiological effects. Research published in psychology and behavior management found students with mad anxiety symptoms can get unusually nervous, clammy hands, and increased heart rate, upset stomach, and light headedness. If you have one of these during math time, it means you have some level of anxiety. Number two, feeling of permanency. When mad is not a student's strong suit, it is easy to believe that it is just the way it is. That they are naturally bad at the subjects and will always be. Moreover, the moment they buy, you buy into that idea, you tend to give up and lose all motivation to improve your math skills. So if you experience that, that means that you have some anxiety. I have a student that came to me last week and the first thing he told me it was that he doesn't like math from the beginning. With that alone, that shows that the student has some level of anxiety. So if you buy into that, it shows that feeling of permanence. Negative self-talk, number three. Chances are you may have witnessed this symptom many times over. It is not so much what it looks like, but what it sounds like. I hate math. I cannot do math. I will never be good at math. If you have that negative self-talk, it's a form of discouragement. It means you have some level of anxiety. Low achievement. Due to lack of confidence, answering math questions correctly or doing well on tests is never an option for those that have no achievement. As exposure to math decreases, so does overall performance. What is worse, students begin allowing low grades to define their identity. What does that mean? I mean, you don't see anything wrong in your score when it comes to math. You don't have to allow that. And that is, if you allow that, it means you have some signs of math anxiety. Avoidance. This is very common. Students with math anxiety try to avoid going to math class, especially during a pop quiz or a test day by the teacher. You want to sleep, they want to rest, they want to do other things. This, that's the sign of symptoms of math anxiety. What about lack of response in class? Students with mad anxiety, let me go by a bit on that. Students with mad anxiety are unwilling to respond to questions or even answer any question during class section because they're afraid of what happened. They're afraid, the fear is there. So when you experience that, you are not very easy in your classroom, new math class, you mean you are experiencing some level of anxiety. Now let's look at what are the major causes of bad anxiety. The three things I have here, fear of being wrong, students are afraid, they don't want to say something, so they're afraid they will be wrong. Pressure of time test and poor test grade. Number three, inability or willingness to complete your assignment on time. Once you don't complete your assignment on time, or you don't do when you're supposed to do it, some level of anxiety will, will gonna come up. And so that's gonna affect you as a student. So those are three major causes of math anxiety. Remember, if you have any question, you can let, let us know at the end of this section. Just write down your question in case you have any. And let's talk about how 
tips to overcome my anxiety now. So how can we overcome mad anxiety? Number one, dispel the myths. Do not believe any of the false statements about man. The first myth is that people have to be born with a mad brain to be good. That is not true. Why some people seem to do better in math than others naturally. This is not true for math than any other subject. So do not believe on that. Number two, turn math into a game. In today, most people love games. A lot of people love games. And turning something complicated into a game is a great way to reduce anxiety. It is also good to have students work in teams when playing games or work out various math problems. In doing so, students learn how to achieve team goals and also work analytically. There are so many math games that can help. If you need some help when you come to the tutoring section, we recommend some of the games that can help you, like Kahoot. A lot of them, a lot of games that can help you work on and turn math into a game that will help to reduce some level of anxiety. Practice on a regular basis. The best way to feel comfortable with something is to do it regularly. When practicing or doing homework, endeavor to work on the most straightforward problem first. It will create a test of success and lay the foundation for more complicated problems. Practice makes perfect, that's what they said. So try to practice as much as you can. When you get stuck, then on stop. Feeling unstuck, especially knee deep in math problem, can elicit feeling of helplessness, frustration, and other math anxiety symptoms. Seeking help in academic center can help to reduce anxiety. Let me say that again. When you get stuck, seek help in the tutoring section. Go to the academic center. We're gonna discuss that at the end of this section to let you know resources that's available for you that you can make use of, that can help you out early enough this semester. Understand that math problem is the key, not memorization. It's something you learn, you don't memorize. Express yourself. Ask questions during class or teaching sections. Get clarification. That helps a lot. Now let's talk about how to overcome text anxiety. In another week or two or three, depending on the kind of program that you are running, maybe four weeks, maybe 12 weeks, maybe 16 weeks, or maybe eight weeks. So you may be preparing for your test. So you need to begin to know how to overcome your test anxiety. Number one, begin now, establish a pre-testing routine. You don't wait on a test day to do that. You have to do that now. Learn relaxation techniques such as deep breathing if you are still very anxious. Fill your brain with healthy foods and hydrate. Avoid sugary foods that might cause your sugar to peak, then drop. Avoid caffeinated drinks like energy drinks and coffee, which can cause anxiety. Exercise in the morning of a test, preferably aerobic if possible. If it doesn't work, please talk to your teachers about your level of anxiety. They may have some useful tips that can help you during your test. The most important of all, if you are still experiencing any of this, at the end of this section, this seminar, please go out and book for a tutoring appointment. Academic Success Center have so many tutors that are very good in math. 
and that can help you at any point in time. Studies have found that one-on-one -on -one tutoring sections can help remedy highly mad anxious students. For example, in addition to reducing math anxiety scores, students with greater tutoring, greater tutoring associated decreases in their medulla activity, showing higher reductions in math, mathematics anxiety. Remember, tutoring section is one, what we do is one on one. It's not a whole class. So it's an opportunity for you to relax and discuss with your tutor, and you will be able to explain in details what you have concern with. So make sure you book for tutoring, get help as quickly as possible. Don't have to wait till when your exam is tomorrow to get help today. No, you don't do that. You get help now. Okay, so that's to help you to reduce some level of anxiety. At this point, I will call one of our, invite one of our manager, Juanita, to educate us and inform us about some of the resources that we have that can help us at this time. Juanita, please. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm the Learning Center Manager for the South and Southwest Tutoring Locations. So I wanna go ahead and to the next slide. I wanna go ahead and talk to you a little bit about how you can contact a tutor whenever you do need help. So, you know, if, if you want to uh, call for an appointment to make an appointment with a tutor, there's more than one way to do so. You can do it from our tutoring website or you can make a phone call. But most of these websites that are listed here will direct you to some information about how to connect with, with a, a tutor. So please, uh, next slide. Okay, so our tutoring flyer has listed um, our phone number. Well, the phone number has been knocked off in the bottom, but that's 713-718-8184. I have also put a flyer in the chat. So if you wanna take a look at that, open it up, save it for later, or take a screenshot of that. That way you get the phone number that you can call to get more information about tutoring and if whether or not your subject's gonna be covered. So tutoring is basically gonna be virtual and beginning next week, January 31st, will be in person as well. So when you schedule an appointment, you'll meet with the tutor for a duration of time, uh, primarily for an hour, hour and a half, depending on the situation and which appointment you have made. Um, our uh, tutors can cover many different levels of math. They also cover English, sciences, um, specialty courses, um, even for health sciences. Um, and for, as far as locations, um, when you go to the tutoring website, which is the one you can see um, on the left-hand side on the very bottom where it says hcs.edu forward slash tutoring, that'll take you to a link to our final tutoring link. And that's gonna show all locations, days and times, and the call center and number to call if you wanna schedule an appointment. Does anybody have any questions about tutoring? About math in general? No, no questions? Well, we hope to see you um, in, later in the semester. Um, we do advise students to get help early and often. Don't wait to the last minute <laughs> when you have to take your exams or your final exams. We ask that you try to meet with a tutor every week, especially when you get stuck with a problem. So we should best of luck. Thank you all. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Juanita. Thank you, Jana. Thank you.